This presentation will cover the methods that were used to record and monitor butterflies. And we record butterflies because understanding changes to butterfly populations is the key to conserving them. It helps us know which species we should be most concerned about and which regions we should be most concerned about. And we can also look at the effects of climate change and try to predict how future climate change will affect different species. And the State of UK Butterflies 2015 report used thousands of points of data from volunteers who were carrying out surveys on weekly transects. And we also used millions of other records sent in by volunteers to their local recorders. And it's useful at this stage to, to know the difference between recording and monitoring butterflies. Monitoring is where you go back to the same site again and again to count the butterflies there. Whereas casual recording is whenever you see a butterfly and just send in your sighting of it. One of the easiest ways to get rec records through to the recorder now is through an online system called iRecord. This system is used for collecting biological records of many different kinds, allowing more people to become citizen scientists. There you send in your sightings to a central place where they're checked by experts and then can be used in conservation and mapping. You can also use it for other types of wildlife, including bees, dragonflies, beetles, grasshoppers, and much more. So it's a very useful system. And you can record using the iRecord website, which you can see with the address on the screen there, or just Googling iRecord. When you're there, you create a, an account with your username and your password, and you can submit records to the iRecord website or to the iRecord app or to the iRecord Butterflies app using this username. And I'll show you how to use the app now. So the app is free to download for Android and Apple devices. It's a really amazing resource for making butterfly records on the go. It has a free ID guide to all of the UK and Ireland butterfly species, and you can submit butterfly records through it using your iRecord login details. You can also use the app to make a new iRecord account. So when you first open the app, this is what you'll see. At the top of the list, you'll see butterflies which are now flying in your area. So at this particular time, peacock and green veined white were known from the area where I was. Then you'll see species which are known from your area at other times of year. So you can see species um, which are found later in summer, for example. But these are based upon old records. So this is based upon what we know about your area currently from records which were sent in previously. There might be the case that there hasn't been much recording in your area. So even common species might be missing from this list. So just bear that in mind. The data will get better over time, but we rely on more records in order to improve that data. Then there are some species which are not recorded from your area, but again, it might just be the case that our database hasn't been up to date with what butterfly species are in your area. And by sending more records, you can help give us a more complete picture. So if you want to make a record of a species or just find out more information about it, you can tap its picture on the screen. So here, if I tapped peacock, you would then find more information about that species. So it brings up more pictures. You have ID tips, its habitats. You also see the flight times of the species and its known distribution in the UK. You can also swipe the photographs and see different pictures of the butterfly, including the upper wing, lower wing, and the caterpillar stage. So it's an incredibly useful resource to have if you're just wanting to find more information about butterflies. But you can also use this page to make a record of the species. So you can tap the record button just there. So if you tap record, you're recording that species only, and this is the page that you will see for your new sighting. You can change the date if you need to. Then the location. If you have location services enabled on your phone, it will automatically find you using GPS and enter that grid reference for you automatically. As you can see here, it's already entered one for me. A grid reference is a series of letters and numbers that is used in mapping. It tells us where the record is coming from and it is essential in all records, but you can change the grid reference and you can give the location a name. So here you can see this was Allen Park in Stirling. So it automatically found me there because I was in the office there where our office is based. And I found a peacock butterfly in the garden there. So you can use this size of square um, if you want to say where the species was. This is less accurate, but and it gives a shorter grid reference as you'll notice from the top. 
but you can zoom in and you can tap smaller squares on the screen and that will give a more precise location. It's not essential to do this, but it's just nice for the recorder to have more information. So you can see I tap the garden and it gives a longer grid reference, which is much more accurate. I also need to give the site a name, so I called it Bal Allen House Garden, um, and it's really important that you do give the site a name. It can be quite generic though. Then you need to tap back and enter the rest of the information. Or you can move around the map and tap other squares to record at those. So for example, if you're at home uploading your records, you can zoom around the map, you can go back to the location, tap that location, and it will enter the grid reference for you. So back at the recording scheme, you can change the number and stage if you need to. You can add any comments that you want to as well. So you could say how certain you were of the ID and also you can add any photos. This is most important if it's a rare or migrant species. So if you see something like a small blue or a clouded yellow, it's very useful for the recorder to have a photograph of that. And also if you're not known to the recorders yet, then it's a good idea to build up your their confidence in you by including photographs with your photos, uh, with your records. A handy way to get photographs of butterflies when they're moving is simply to take a film of them on your phone. So if you're taking a video, you can just pause the video when you watch it back and then take a screenshot of it to show the ID features you need to confirm that ID. So you can add photos there and then click finish. That's when you stop editing, but it isn't sent yet. So you'll notice a section called pending. Those haven't been uploaded yet. So if you're out in your field and you don't have access to Wi-Fi, for example, you can save up your records this way. And then when you get home, you can upload them. So you just tap upload and it will go from your phone and go onto the iRecord website. If you need to edit the record after that, you need to tap this button and it will take you to the iRecord website in order to edit your record. So you can also enter single records by tapping the record button at the bottom of the screen. But if you press and hold that button, it will bring up another option called species list. So if you choose that option, it allows you to enter more than one species for a single site. So here I was recording at Royal Gardens in Stirling, and I was using it to record the species I found there. So as I went along, um, I gave the, the site a name. So I, I found the location automatically. I gave it the park's name and I defined the area size. But you can add species as you go to easily increase the numbers by tapping the count button. So you can see here, if, if I tapped uh, the number one beside small tortoise shell, it would increase it to two. And you can add more species using the add species option as well. So this is a really great way of adding a species list to a site and giving us more, much more information about it. So as before, you need to tap finish, it will go to pending, and then you can upload your records from there. After that, then your record will go online to be verified by a local butterfly recorder. Sometimes they might get in touch with you to question the record if it's rare or unusual. So do try to get up a photo of it if you can to back it up, especially if it's something you're not familiar with. Now coming on to our two main schemes for monitoring butterflies, and we'll start with the UK BMS, the UK Butterfly Monitoring Scheme. This gives us the best information on butterfly population changes over time. Using it, we can track changes in the local population, and this contributes to the national and regional picture of trends in butterfly abundance. This data is almost entirely collected by volunteers, contributing 80,000 days of effort per year, and would love more people to get involved in this. So essentially, the UK BMS is a weekly butterfly count along a fixed route during suitable weather, and it runs throughout half of the year. So between the 1st of April until the 30th of September for all species transects, but we also have single species transects, which run throughout the flight period of target species only. So the timing for that then is ideally between 10.45 and quarter to four. That's when butterflies are most active and it should be in bright, warm weather. And the weather conditions then are at least 17 degrees in any amount of cloud cover. So even if it's completely cloudy outside, so long as it's 17 degrees or more, you can still record butterflies. But if it's a sunnier day, you can record down to 13 degrees Celsius. That's if it's at least 60% sun. It should also be dry and not windy. An example then might be that if it's the middle of summer, you look outside and it's completely cloudy, but you check the temperature and it's 18 degrees. In that situation, you're okay to record. 
Then if you're recording at the beginning of April, it might only be 14 degrees outside, but it's completely sunny, there are no clouds, and in that situation, you're okay to record as well because the butterflies will still be active in the sunlight. And just a word on cloud and sun. So we all, we use the word sun um, to also mean bright cloud. So if it's cloudy, but you can still see your shadow clearly on the ground, that is technically for these purposes classified as sun because it means that there's enough radiation still getting to the ground in order to warm the butterflies up. And a transect then is essentially a root which is broken up into a different number of sections. These sections might be of different length and going through different habitats. It will have a map and there will be a clear start and finish point on it. And it tells you where the sections start and end. And we record the butterfly in each section as follows. So at the top of the form, you will have to record things like the date and your start and finish time. And it's really important that you record record this environmental data. So the date is essential, and then the start and finish time are essential as well. You'll see those at the top of the recording form there. Then you also record the average temperature. Ideally, that would be done th from a thermometer that you take with you, though you can use other sources such as weather from a phone app. So that's the average temperature in degrees Celsius. Then the average wind speed is mentioned on a scale from zero to six called the Beaufort scale. And you can see that ranges from zero, where smoke rises vertically, to six, where large branches move and trees sway. And you also record the wind direction. That is the direction that the wind is coming from. And just to say that all of this information is required, but please don't get too caught up in it. Um, it just really helps our scientists to exclude counts which have been conducted in poor weather that resulted in butterfly numbers. And that's the main reason why we need to have this information. Now with UKBMS, you always follow exactly the same route, so it should never change. You walk at a slow and steady pace, and you have to imagine that you're within a five meter cube. This is your recording box. So that should be five meters to the front of you and five meters to the side. So if you're at the, the back middle of the box, that means you're recording 2.5 meters either side of you and five meters in front. And you can see that in the illustration here. It's important to say that the reason we ask volunteers to do this is because everybody in the country will be using this same method. So it gives some scientific rigor to the surveys and it's important that we all follow these, uh, this method here. Now on your recording form, uh, this is what it would look like. So you go along and you make a tally of the species you see in each section. So for section one, you might see four small white, two green fan white and an orange tip. And using a tally is very useful because then it just allows you to add more species as you go along. So finished in section one, going on to section two, three, four, and and so on. And each, uh, each transect will have different numbers of sections in it. So just bear that in mind that it might not just have 10, it might have fewer than 10 on your particular transect. And for each section, you also need to record the percentage of sunshine. And that's really not as tricky as it sounds. And really, it is the proportion of time when there was either sun shining on you or bright cloud while you were walking that section only. So if it takes you 10 minutes to walk a section and it was sunny for six minutes, then that's 60%. And a rough estimate will be sufficient for this. So it's not to do with the percentage of cloud in the sky. It's to do with the time when sun or bright cloud was on you when you were walking that section. And then just to say, so the percentage of sunshine is at the bottom of each section on your recording form. And you can use your recording form or a notebook, but just remember to include all of this information that is included on your recording form. So what next then, you can keep your form safe and send it to us or the person organizing the transect at the end of the season, or you can simply scan and send it to them. Even better then if you can enter the data to the UK BMS website yourself, and you can stay in touch with others walking the same transect to maintain a rota. So most transects are walked by groups of two or three people, and that just allows others to share in the work and for people to have days when they're at work themselves or on holiday, and it means that you can have a small group of people walking it. And this is an example of our website that you can use to find transects which are available. 
So here I've just zoomed in on the area around Lisburn, between Lisburn and Loch Ney, and I've chosen two transects. So I know at Portmore Loch there are two transects. I can see the, this one was set up in 2015, but it was last surveyed in 2019. So that would indicate to me that nobody's walking it anymore, and it would be a prime one to take on as a new recorder there. So that would be a really good one to take on. But here I've got another one at Sleeve Nacloy, and I can see that it was walked in 2021. Now that would indicate that people are still doing it, but it's worth checking out because it might be the case that they need more help. So if you see a transect like that, just click on it and you can see more information about it. Then get in touch with us at Butterfly Conservation and we can see if the current recorders there need more help at their transect. So that's if you click on the word TRAN, you will see those. But our recording priorities in Butterfly Conservation for Northern Ireland include more general species transects, especially west of the Ban, especially in Tyrone, because there are no transects there at all. So we're desperately um, wanting more transects in those locations, recording all the species. And we need more help for existing transects because the majority of them are walked by only one person. And those are clearly at risk if that one person moves away or gets ill, for example. So they might need more help. So let us know where you're based and we can help you make a new transect or to match you with an existing one. So we're very happy to help you make new transects if there's not a suitable one nearby. Then looking at the wider countryside butterfly survey, these surveys are in pre-designated locations. They can help us collect data from a wider variety of different site types, especially away from the nature reserves. And there's only two to four surveys needed in these per year, with the core period being in July and August, and optional ones being in springtime as well. And you can find those by going to our website and clicking the BC options on it. So these are the, uh, the wider countryside butterfly squares are designated by BC. Those tend to have a site code instead of a site name. And you'll see here it's called WCVS, so it's clearly one of ours. You can see this one was last surveyed in 2015, so it will need new people to help survey there. So it's a great way to find out new potential survey sites near you. And one of our priorities in, in Northern Ireland is to find out re what's really happening on marsh fritillaries. And one of the best ways you can monitor this species is by looking for their larval webs in the late summer. So this is what the adult looks like, and you can just see here the larval web on the devil's bit scabious. We can get you training to show you what they look like and we can put you in touch with the sites so you can walk along and record the number of these that you see and then you're monitoring the species for us. And you can see here the types of locations where you can find the marsh fritillary. That's usually done in late August um, and into late September and you can even do it on wet days and actually sometimes having a wet day is better because the webs can show up better whenever they have rain or dew on them and they're much easier to see then. These only need one visit per year, and it's an excellent way to help our, our work in Northern Ireland. Then for the large heath, we have transect, which lasts for about eight weeks in June and July. But we only have one transect for this species in Northern Ireland. So really, we don't know very much about what its populations are doing here. You can see its populations are quite well distributed in the west and north. So if you live near any of these areas, we'd love to get you involved in large heath monitoring. Those are on peat bogs with cotton grass. And this, as a reminder, is what the large heath butterfly looks like. And we've also recently relaunched the garden butterfly survey, and we'd love to get you involved in that. It's very easy now to register your garden. All you have to do is do a survey once per month throughout the year. So it can even be done early on in the year and late in the year. And in fact, you can do it every single day because all you have to do is enter in the maximum number of a single species you saw on a given day. And even better news now is that it can um, embrace a wider variety of garden types, including balconies, allotments and shared gardens. So if you're not already involved in the Garden Butterfly Survey, we'd love to get you taking part in that. And you can find that at gardenbutterflysurvey.org. So what next then? So you can keep in contact with your staff members of butterfly conservation in Northern Ireland, and we will do our best to help you get involved in recording and monitoring butterflies wherever you are and however much time you're able to give. So thanks again to our funders at Northern Ireland Environment Agency, and thank you for listening.